I got a problem that needs solving. Let's head to the truck and check it out. All right. Here it is, right here. So this right here is my base knob for the down for sound amplifier. And this is the controller for the mini DSP digital signal processor. When I first installed all this in the truck, the plan was to stick the digital signal processor here with some double-sided tape. That did not work. And to mount the base knob underneath the pocket, which didn't work because I had to put the DSP controller in the pocket. So I've got to find a better way to do this. That means I got to take the dash apart. So here we go. I've had this dash apart so many times I could just about do it in my sleep. So what I want to do is take the pocket out. I can reach the screws for the pocket. No problem. I'm going to do that right now. It's one of those tools that now that I have one, I don't know how I live without it. All right, that's the pocket. You can see where I'd hacked into it to try to make it work and it didn't. Now that I have this out, that's actually gonna make my life a whole lot easier. I can take this to the workbench and see what I can do. The head unit doesn't have a volume knob. So the DSP controller is being used as the volume knob. The plan is to cut a piece that goes into the pocket and cut holes in that piece for the DSP controller and the base knob. We're gonna use this thing right here to make those cuts. More on that in just a bit. To do all that, we've got to take some measurements. The base knob is gonna be tricky because it's in your regular shape. If you're anything like me and you've never done something like this before, then you won't know if it works until it actually works. You kind of have to figure it out as you go. It'd be super easy to edit this video so that it looks like I figured it all out on the first try, but that's just not reality. It's more than just the trial and error of making a mount for the base knob and the DSP controller. This is a new laser. I've never used it before, so I've got to figure out all the settings. After taking a whole bunch of measurements, it's time to sit down in front of the computer and fire up some software. This is called Lightburn. It's the standard software for controlling lasers. You'll see right here the first problem. The two controllers will fit, but it's going to be a really, really tight fit, which is why a laser is the ideal tool for a problem like this, because the diameter of the laser beam is very small, and that allows you to get into tight places. So it's off to the laser. This is a Creality Falcon 2 Pro. I did not purchase this laser. It was sent to me. Let's dive into this thing and get to cutting. I'm not actually a very big fan of lasers. I've got one now and I don't enjoy using it. I'll give you my thoughts on this particular laser a little bit later after I've made a few cuts. This little wing right here is 1.5 millimeters, which is 0 0.05 inches. For really small details like that, a laser is the way to go. But that's not going to work. There's not enough clearance inside the pocket for both of these little boxes to fit. So it's on to plan B. It turns out the DSP can be configured both as a volume knob and a base knob. So I'm I'm going to make a mount for just the DSP controller. Okay, here's kind of the moment of truth. This is the mini DSP remote control. This is the cutout. Look at that. Nice tight fit. Hey, I like that. That turned out really neat and clean and there's enough surface area to etch a logo or some lettering. That might be the way to go. But then I got a little bit of feedback from a friend that runs a stereo shop and I decided it would be better to mount this directly to the dash instead of trying to attach it to the pocket itself. So moving on to plan C. To do that, I've got to pull the dash panel out of the truck and get some measurements. The first issue is right here. These screws are going to interfere with the four mounting points points for the pocket. So the mount needs some dog ears on it so I can attach it without interfering with those two screws. When prototyping like this, a great way to save a little bit of money is to make test cuts on cheaper material. This is the material that came with the laser. And I'm glad I made those test cuts because the screw holes are too far apart. I need to adjust them inward by a few millimeters. So more measurement and back to the laser to try plan C attempt number two. The thing that really sets this apart is the camera control. You put your material down, you hit up update overlay and then you can see exactly where your pieces are going to be on your workpiece and then you can just drag those suckers wherever you want them to be. This piece here is not going to fit. Easy fix, just make it a different layer. I'll come back later and cut that again.
This is going to work by building up layers and stacking them together. This is the outermost layer. It's just a tad bit oversized. The final piece will need to be a few millimeters shorter. And then behind that will be two pieces stacked together. Then this last piece will screw down behind the dash panel from behind the dash. It took a few more test cuts to get everything to fit perfectly snug. Then I realized that I really did need to keep the base knob because the base knob has a voltage display. So now it's time for plan D, which involves dismantling the base knob. Pro tip, order a backup base knob before you start taking your base knob apart. That way you've got a backup on hand if or when you break the first one. Most base knobs are very simple. You just need a single hole, but this one right here needs a cut in the front for the extra button and the display. The outer case on the base knob acts as like a cage to hold everything into position. So what I have to do now is make my own homemade cage for the base knob. This is another spot where the laser comes in really handy. To build that cage, I cut several pieces out of three millimeter acrylic. And these pieces are really small with really fine details. It would be nearly impossible to make something like that without a laser. To hold the cage together, I'm using some M3 screws and some standoffs that are leftovers from another project. When I cut the back piece, I forgot to cut a hole for the plug, so I had to go back to the laser and cut a new piece. After a lot of trial and error, it's time to put everything together, but first, let's talk about this laser. It's awesome. This one is an order of magnitude better than the one I already had. And one of the best parts about this laser, it's not gonna nickel and dime you to death. Meaning that it comes out of the box with a bunch of accessories that you need in order to get the full functionality out of the machine. They throw in an exhaust fan and a hose. You don't have to waste time building a case for it. It came fully enclosed. Plus, it's got a camera built into that case. If you want to use a camera with a standard open frame laser, you've got to buy the camera separately and then rig up some kind of a mount. With most lasers, you've got to purchase a separate honeycomb to get your material off of your workbench. This one came with some slats that do the exact same thing. Plus, it's got a drawer on the front. You just slide it out to grab any small pieces that may have fallen through the slats. Then you can take that drawer to the trash can and just dump any trash. Another important laser cutting tool is a thing called air assist. The air assist is really handy. It minimizes the scorching of your material by blowing out any flames that might turn into small fires. This thing, it arrived almost fully assembled. All you have to do is put the top on. Now the top is a pain in the rear to put on. You want to grab a friend to help you with that. You just need four hands to do it. Plus, you've got to install the slats, which is no big deal. They just drop into slots. As far as safety features go, the top is made out of red plastic that blocks laser light. Most lasers come with a little shield right around the laser lens. But with this thing being fully enclosed with that red shield over the top, there's little chance of stray laser beams hitting you in the eye. That combined with the fan and the exhaust hose means you can work in the same room as the laser while it's cutting. This is a 40 watt laser. My last laser was a 20 watt laser. The difference in cutting power is huge. This laser can can cut through most quarter inch material in a single pass. And yes, this laser was sent to me to review and yes, I'm saying mostly positive things about it. And that's because I've had a legitimate good experience using this laser. Now the big downside to this laser, this is a diode laser. A diode laser cannot cut clear acrylic or blue acrylic. For that, you need a CO2 laser. The problem with CO2 lasers, they are a lot more expensive. Okay, back to the actual project. Everything's cut out. I've done multiple test fits and now it's time to assemble everything. Start with these two pieces here. They're exactly the same and they were cut out of six millimeter acrylic. Add a little CA glue, hit it with some activator and they're gonna bond together in an instant. Now grab the dash panel and flip it over and drop those center pieces into position before adding that back piece that mounts to the dash. Once again, use super glue for this, but don't spray on any activator. You don't want this to bond immediately. You want a little bit of time to position it. When you screw that back piece down, that'll clamp all the pieces together. Let it sit for 10 or 15 seconds. It'll be solid as a rock. Then flip the panel over, a little super glue, a little activator, and attach the faceplate. plate. 
At that point, everything is locked together. That CA glue is pretty strong stuff. Pull it out of the dash panel and begin assembling the base knob cage. I didn't have a three millimeter wrench, so I had to tighten it down with some tweezers. The DSP controller has nothing to stop it from sliding out the back of the dash. So I cut another piece that I'm going to super glue to the back of the dash mount. Then it's just a matter of installing the dash panel in the vehicle. And it looks amazing. This was a lot of work, but I am thrilled with the way this turned out. I've got all my functionality. I've got a volume knob. I've got a base knob. I've got my voltage display. There's no way I could have done this without this laser cutter. I'm thrilled. This has been a great experience. Click right up here to watch another video. I'm Justin. This is the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel, and I will see you on the next adventure.